Okay, now we are into uh, lesson plans for comprehension, and there's two varieties that you need to learn how to do. If it's narrative text, you need to know how to write up a story map. If it is expository text, you need to know how to do an outline or a graphic outline, whatever you want to call it. Now, read this data set for yourself and understand that, like all of the children in these lesson plan questions, the main problem that they have is this. They skip details. And when you go through this, you'll see that this child not only skips details in some instances, but simply misinterprets. And the type of lesson plan that you're going to do, I need to add a bullet right here, is one that's going to force the child to categorize events into a sequence, like what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, or what happened in the past, the present, and the future. Now, for these essays in this set, in um, part two, I've um, posted only selected responses because it's the same lesson plan over and over and over again. And remember that we always have to end these things with a uh, multisensory benefit. So for narrative text, it's really, it will really just be a story map or a variation on a story map. So let me show you what a stock story map looks like just by looking at this, uh, this uh, answer right here. Now, regardless of what data set it is, you state the need in the opening, which you can see uh, right here. And I say the student is having trouble with the schema of narrative text she or he is lost in the details of the story and then all I do is follow with examples. Now you would modify your response to accommodate the examples required for this paragraph and clearly where the child's misinterpreting the postcard and that data set that we're, that we're currently on that's the information that would go in here as well as additional information about the child's behavior. So you want to focus on narrative details that describe past and future events. You want to have your little story map, learning log, and a pen and then you want to state your steps. The steps are great because they're going to work for both a story map and, a, and an outline. So be sure that you just let the verbs do the work. You're going to display and explain and then draw the thing for them. Be a little wordy. You're going to read the passage together and you're going to highlight details and be sure you put in examples and when you list the details. Then what you want to do is ask literal and inferential questions. Remember, give them a WH, like a who question, and maybe a why question, or how does the character feel. And then they simply rewrite it. They rewrite this thing up in their learning log. And then the benefit really just it summarizes how this thing works. I name the activity. I say a story map will help the student understand the schema of narrative text. Remember that schema just means organization of details. She will be able to see how details in the passage are organized in the past, present, and future, and she will understand how to answer literal and inferential comprehension questions using this tool. Finally, she will be able to write accurate summaries about what she reads that will elaborate and extend her understanding of narrative text. So the point is this. This answer is just the stock formula for writing out a story map and by the way a out, an outline it'll work for both so I'm gonna turn to the next answer uh, that's posted let me go back to our workbook and go to the next question and I don't know how to make this any easier for you um, except to say that um, it's always going to be a story map here even with text that's a little challenging like pose the fall of the house of usher where we have the description of the setting that is actually a metaphor, sort of a larger symbol, that is going to foreshadow events. Where you have this house and the description of the house reveals that there's a flaw in the house, which means there's a flaw in the family that's going to cause it to crumble because the foundation isn't sound. And you can see in here that the child's description is so, so off that it isn't even really related to what the child was reading. They were misinterpreting details because that's what they do. So you can do a story map for this or simply what you could term a story frame. And surprise, the way that you're going to describe that story frame will be utilizing the same steps that you will find in uh, the story map. You know, it's just going to be an adaptation, that's all. And and one of the answers, too, uh, for this one specifically for the Usher House, if you don't want to do um, or describe a story frame, start to just be nimble and, and describe things like 
T-charts, for example. Here I just described the child's need with this, uh, the Usher home, for example. I'm going to be focusing on narrative de details to describe a metaphor. And then what you can do is if you don't want to do a story frame, which would be a visual graphic representation of what's happening in that setting and in the description where the child draws a picture based on the details and then you check it for understanding, you can do a T-chart. You simply display the T-chart and explain how it reveals metaphors. You have the Usher house and the Usher family because that's what's being compared here. The Usher house is being likened to the Usher family with a fatal flaw in it. You're going to read the passage together and surprise, highlight details and then give examples. And then you're going to list the details in the T-chart. Whoopee! And show them a partially completed T-chart just like this. Uh, ask literal and inferential questions, have the child write it up, and the benefit's identical. It's going to make the schema concrete, the details are visual, the student can make visual connections between details in the story that relate to the house, and details in the story that kind of foreshadow events that will take place with this, uh, this family. So this is really pretty easy stuff, it, it really is. Okay, next on our uh, little list right here, we have, oh, you've already seen this one, The House on Haunted Hill, a fascinating tale about well, you know already. So in this one, what you're going to do is a simple story map again. No need to dwell on it because you already know the format. Just write it up and get practice memorizing the format. Uh, same is true for something like this where you have the scorpion and the snake on the next page. With uh, this one, I mean, it's really pretty easy. It's a story map. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can hardly believe it myself. I think though, one that uh, we should spend a little time on. Turn the page if you if you would. This is a, a dis we don't even have to spend much time on it. Here we have a description of some kids who are playing chess, and you see in this part right here, ever so imperceptibly, the table leg moved just slightly to the right. In this situation, these two kids are playing chess at a tournament, and one kid's going to dump the chess table over because he's a uh, because he's losing. And so uh, the child's having problems with uh, inferential comprehension, you know, not understanding that this is foreshadowing events uh, that are going to take place. So what do you do? Oh my, I think a story map? Yes, I think I'm correct and I think you are too. So just do a story map for that. It's identical to what we were doing. This is one that I'll spend a, a little bit more time on so I'm not trying to be flip or anything, but Read this over and you see it's about a student who um, is pretending to be cool in new school a after having been made fun at, at an old school. This description in this part of the essay is about the past where she got made fun of. The child right here is standing in the present remembering how horrible it was at that old school. That's what we call a flashback. Suddenly she's finding herself worried about the future because a sharp-faced girl who has remembered who she is and the foreshadowing occurs right here. Beth felt her heart sink like a stone. So here we have foreshadowing. And you and I both know then that in the student's retelling, the student has mixed up all these details, has misinterpreted them and can't sequence. Well, the only thing that you can really do for a child who can't sequence is this. You have to do a story map. You have to say what happened first, second, <clears throat> and third, or what happened in the past, the present, and the future. And in this answer, then, this part right here will take care of her lack of uh, flashback understanding. And this part up here will take care of the foreshadowing. So let's take a look at the answer for this one. And it's a good answer because, like I said, you're just going to adapt it to any given situation that you find yourself in with narrative text. And you can see in my answer uh, that I say, the student is having trouble with the schema of narrative text. She is lost in the details of the story. For example, her retelling demonstrates that there is a girl named Beth who is facing a difficult situation in school, etc. We're going to focus on narrative details to describe past and future events. I'm going to include a story map, a learning log, and a pen. And, I mean, it's the same thing, everybody. It's uh, You're going to display and explain. Here's my story map. We're going to read in details together and highlight. We're going to list them out, show our listing, 
ask literal and inferential questions in here. And then finally, we were going to rewrite uh, the retelling and the learning log, and then we give the benefit, which is a multisensory benefit about it, addressing her need with expository, excuse me, with narrative text schema, narrative text details, especially past, present, and future, and it'll help with her ability to answer literal uh, and inferential comprehension questions and write summaries. Okay, so go ahead then and uh, write that up. This is a story map, everybody, and all you're going to do is adapt it. That's all you're going to do. So next on our list is, uh, looks like another quick case study, an IEP. Let's get through that one and then we'll move on. We're almost done. Hooray.